review and okay so like i said guys we were going to be talking about <clears throat> two topics for the <clears throat> review reminder we have done this before so this is quick review um sizing capacitor for a power system and uh, for uh, sizing the capacitor to correct the power factor for a power system as well as for a motor so that's what you're looking at so can i guys if you have this in front of you right everybody have this sheet in front of you right so here's what we have that we have a switch here uh, example number one we have a switch here the original power factor is 70 percent you get penalized by the utility they told you to go correct the power factor okay original power factor 70 percent the end of this switch here is 2000 the voltage is two-way three-phase system and you are to correct the power factor to 95 percent guys that's your goal correct the power factor to 95 percent from 70 and then after you correct the power factor you have to size the following number one can you see that number one right here number one is the capacitor size number two is the cable that's going to the capacitor number three is the fuse and number four is the disconnect Direct, does that bring, ring a bell? Is that what you guys did with me? I did the homework and everything else. Nothing new. And that's what you're going to see tomorrow on the test. So honestly, our calc test should not take more than 20 minutes, maybe maybe even 15 minutes if you follow up with it. Um, uh, Matt, bring your cheat sheet with you if you want to. I mean, when you size the disconnect, you multiply by 1.35. The only thing I don't want to see is this example in front of you. Any question about what we have, Adam? <clears throat> does it make sense? okay let's go <clears throat> so we need to size a capacitor for a power system when you size a capacitor for the power system guys the first thing you need to do the first step that you need to do is to go find <clears throat> is you need to go find the um right okay go find step number one is you need to go find a two power that's step number one you always have to find a two power so you multiply the voltage source by the current by the modification for the three phase 1.73 Divide everything by a thousand to make a KVA, and you multiply by the original power factor. Everybody understand which power factor is that? That's the original power factor. So if you were to do this, Adam, you took uh, 1.73, uh, multiply this maybe by a uh, voltage of uh, my voltage is 208, multiply this one by a current of 2000, and multiply by uh, a power factor of 0.7. And divide everything by a thousand. Cool. So that's what you basically um, when you do all your multiplication. When you do all this, you should come up with 500 kW give or take. 500 kW give or take. Any comments, guys? Any questions about this step? Straightforward. You find the true power by multiplying the apparent power with the power factor. Does that make sense, gentlemen? The next step that you need to do, Adam, <clears throat> after you do this, is you need step two, you need to take the 70% power factor, take it to electrical wiring industrial, page 193, or the wall dash 12. And remember, you, you're correcting to 95, 95%. These two factors, this is original, no, and corrected. Original and corrected. So you take the original and corrected. Everybody knows how to use this table, gentlemen. Go to page one uh, 193 and um, and find yourself a capacitor. 193 and find yourself a capacitor. Karen, everybody, you, you guys know how to use this table, right? The the way we use it, like I said, the, these the columns here. The first column is the original. The first row is the corrected, and you cross-reference the original with the corrected, and you find yourself um, the power factor, uh, the multiplier. So from these, if you guys go, can you guys verify that one? So we're correcting to 95 power factor, so then your multiplier should be 0.691. Can you guys assure me that you know how to do that? Everybody knows how to find that multiplier 0.691 by cross-referencing the original power factor with the corrected power factor. Okay, so that's very important. The other place you can find it, Adam, is uh, DeWalt 1-12, the same table. So either way, you guys can find uh, the same information. 
What I like in uh, electrical wiring industrial book, guys, they have um, a bigger sheet that you can use for a lot of uh, application. DeWalt has the most common ones they use. <clears throat> any comments, any questions? Straightforward. Find the true power, multiply it by the multiplier. Okay, now step. this is step one. Step three, gentlemen, you need to, and ladies, you need to take the multiplier and multiply it by the power factor. So here's my uh, 0 0.091 uh, or 0.6, not 0. 0. 0.691. Multiply this one by the 500 kW that we came up with. And if Chad did his math right, this should be the 346k bar. 346k bar. That's step number three. You go find the k bar by multiplying it by the multiplier. Derek, you remember how you guys did it? And all of you, the one who came from electrical, you guys, we did it by a completely longer way. And you still can do it if you want to. This is a shortcut, the multiplier and the sheet to get you not to, to do it the longer way. Um, why to do the longer way when there's a sheet that can give you M the cut? The, you're going to be doing it with us the longer way. So, okay, so then you take these, gentlemen and ladies, you take the 3, 4, 6K bar, that number that you came up with, and you go next to electrical wiring industrial 193, table 11.3, <clears throat> and go to the next standard that this table will give you. If this table doesn't go that high, Adam, then you go multiple, then you just read this one, this is multiple of hundreds. Go to the next hundred for the sake of the calculation. Did you guys hear me? So you go three, four, six, this will be what? 400K bar. On the test, if you don't try K bar, I will dock you half of the point, guys. I want you to know we size capacitor in K bar. So K bar. So 400K bar. That's the size of capacitor that we need. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Comments, questions about this? Does it make sense? Yes, no? Okay. Uh, cap feeder. So now, now that you know the capacitor, Adam, you can size your, your feeder. So the way we size the feeder, now that we know the capacitor size, we take the 400K bar, Divided by the voltage of the power system that we have is 1.73 prepares to it, and that will get you a full load amp of um, if you do that of uh, one one uh, one 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 two amps one 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 thousand one hundred twelve amps. Then, so the first thing is you need to find the amps. Then you need to multiply it by 1.35. Where did this come from, Adam? 460.8a. Uh, we'll tell you multiply by 1.15.1.1.2. You multiply that, baby. 1.501 amp. And that's what the amps after you increase it by 135%. And my understanding, you increase it by 135%, guys, because capacitors charge and discharge, so they, they abuse the conductors more. Why not 1.25? 1.25 for continuous load. These are continuous load plus they charge and discharge, so they, have, they, they abuse the conductors more. You need to up them a little. Okay, the rest is history, gentlemen. You need to, now you can't find a conductor 1501. It has to be custom designed conductor for you. That's 1500, 1500, uh, 1500 amp. That's a lot of amps. So what do you do? You will give you a uh, parallel. So how many? I decided to put five on the test tomorrow. If you put six, that's fine with me. You can pedal. Your rule when you pedal, guys, you want to hover around 400 amps. So if you divide it by, um, so that will give you 300 amps, right? 300 amps um, divided by five. And if you take this one to table 310.15 B16 under 75 degree column, and that will get you the following. It's going to be, uh, your system is going to be five sets of how many conductors? Of three conductors. Each conductor is 350 kcm thhn. 
So five sets of, there are five sets, each set is going to be a 500. So you can imagine how it's going to look like. It's one set, two sets, three sets, four sets, five sets. And each one of these sets in a conduit, right? And each conduit has, I'm going to show one of them. Here's one conductor, here's a second conductor, here's a third conductor. And each one of these conductors <clears throat> is 500 to 350 kCm. Any comments, guys? Any questions about that? What type of conduit? They don't tell you, Matt? Or is he empty? Right? That's the default. THHN EMP is your default, unless you are told otherwise. What's told otherwise? Outside, underground, PVC. You go outside, PVC or EMP actually. Underground, typically. For hazardous location, rigid. We'll talk about this. Okay. Everybody's good with that? Yes, no? Move on? Okay. So, cab over temperature device. The capacitor over temperature device, gentlemen. The same, I use the same multiplier, and I like to say um, disclaimer here. Do you guys see that? This is where um, 460.8D, CSK is my initials. <clears throat> the reason why I do that, <clears throat> the code says as low as practical. So, I like to use the same multiplier, 1.35, and go down. Okay. So we we take our um, we took the capacitor over competition device. Um, we're going to take the one one uh, one two, and we already did that one one five zero one amp. Take the one five zero one amp. Take it to two forty dot six. That'll give you twelve hundred amp. Twelve hundred amp. We go down to twelve hundred amp. We go down to twelve hundred amp. Or if you have an adjust at this at this amp, guys, most likely that will be a fuse. If you if it's a circuit breaker, most likely will be an adjustable circuit breaker. You go tweak it down to fifteen hundred amp. Okay, so capacitor disconnect. Disconnect capacitor disconnect. The same calculation one 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 two. We'll give you 1501 one amp. You take the 1501 one amp, take it to the wall, and that will give you, I think, 1600, right? So that will give me a disconnect of 1600. You go up on this one. You go up 1600, <clears throat> your disconnect will be 1600. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Comments, questions? And the disconnect uh, here is coming directly from this. This is where it points to the reference 460.8C. That's where it tells you to do so. All right. Any questions, guys, about this example before we move into a different, the second example? Any comments? Straightforward. No gimmicks. Nothing. Direct doesn't make sense. All of them is 1.35, basically. All right, here's a second example for you, gentlemen. Adam, did it go too fast? No? Okay. Um, here's a second example. Second example is, <clears throat> if you guys remember when we talked about capacitor, you can correct at two levels. At the level of the switch gear, that's a poor man's job. One capacitor, big, fat, fluffy. At the level of the offenders, the offenders are the induction motors. You go right next to every motor, and you assign 15 horsepower or more, and you assign a little capacitor. So when the motor is running, the capacitor is running to offset the power factor, to offset the K-bar of the induction motor and improve the power factor. That's how they do it, right at the offender level. What's the disadvantage is? A lot of capacitors everywhere. But it's the best way to do it, though. Okay, now doing it at the level of the offender, which is, here's the offender. I have 150 horsepower motor. 480 U frame, 1800 RPM, RPM um, speed. I need to correct the power factor for this guy. And the correction, they give you a range. The correction, because it depends how is the motor loaded, half loaded, fully loaded, what's not. 
So I want to correct for between 90% all the way to 97%. So correct the power factor two between these two values. What's the original power factor? I don't care. It's screwed up anyway, probably 80 or something. But we need from the get go to go and find a capacitor so that can get me in that range. Okay. So to do this, guys, you need to do, uh, and then after we find the capacitor size number one, we need to size the conductor, we need to size the fuse, and we need to size the disconnect. Same thing like we did for the main capacitor. Make sense? Yes, no? Okay. Does it make sense? Yeah? So capacitor size. So now for this, guys, I have a sheet for you, gentlemen and ladies. And ladies and gentlemen. Okay, and... Um, for the for the for this particular one, you're gonna to go to 150 at 480 U frame uh, at, at 1800 RPM. Go to table 11-2, electrical wiring industrial, page 194. Make sure you know how to use this table, guys. We have used it before. Okay, we have used this table before. Um, and make sure you go to the U frame, not the T frame, because that's what we're asking about. The U frame, which is the upper one. And if you go there, you're gonna when you go there, you're gonna find that the capacitor size is gonna be 30k bar. No calculation needed. 30k bar. Any comments, guys? Any questions? So on the test, you open the book, go to that particular one, and pull the capacitor size. Done. That's basically what the what the size is. 30k bar. Everybody knows how to go there, gentlemen, ladies. 30k bar. So table 11-2, electrical wiring. This is supposed to be E, but we she lost her tooth here. So electrical wiring industrial. When the E gets old, she loses one of her teeth. Um, page 194. Cool? So make sure you write to yourself. Okay, after that, the, the rest is history, gentlemen. We're beating ourselves. So you take the 30K now. Now I know K bar uh, divided by 1.73 times the voltage uh, is 480. And that will get you a healthy 36 amps. 36 amps. You multiply the 36 amps by 1.35 like we have done before. You get your 49 amps. And gentlemen, you take your 49 amps into a 310.15 B16, 75 degree column, that'll get you three conductors. Number uh, number eight, A, W, G, T, H, H, N. And if I ask you to find the conduit for it, you know how to go to an XC um, and any sequence book and find your conductor, uh, an EMT conduit that can fit three conductors, number eight, T, H, H, N. Any comments, any questions? Make sense? No gimmicks, nothing. Okay. Move on. Yes. No. Can you guys give me a hint? Cool. All right. Next. Uh, cab over competition device. We just done that. My cap, um, uh, so where are we here, Chair? Okay, so we got the cap, number three, cap over competition device. The same thing, guys, 36, based on your friend Chad. 36, you multiply, you get 49 amps. You take the 49 amps, put it in uh, this test, 240.6, they'll get you 45 amps. 45 amp, you go down. You don't go up on the over competition device. Then you jump into the same calculation, guys, the 36 here. You get your 49. I'm just repeating myself here. You take the 49 here, amps into the wall. That will get you 60 amp disconnect. Three pole, 60 amp disconnect. Three pole, 60 amp disconnect. So a fuse of 45 and a disconnect of 60. As a disconnect of 60. No gimmicks, nothing. Can't be easier than that. Can it? No. So 30 on Friday, that's cool. That's pathetic that we get happy for 30, right? <laughs> but I'll take it. Versus what, minus 10 or minus 16? So you're talking about a, a swing of 38, 40 
degrees Fahrenheit. Wow, unreal March. Here we go for you, Minnesota. Okay, gentlemen, the second example is the same calculation for a motor. The only difference here, uh, there, my friend, is the two weight system. It's a two weight bolt. If it's a two weight, you have to do another modification, another step. You guys remember that? The two weight. So here's the same system. Capacitor, I need to find the capacitor size. I need to find the conductor, the disconnect, the fuse, the fuse, the disconnect. The motor is 75 horsepower, 28. T frame, 1200 RPM, three phase. The correction, uh, I need to correct two between these two values 39 to 97% power factor correction. The only thing I threw this one at Amania because the voltage is 28. Can you guys write yourself? If it's 28, there's another step that you have to do. Okay, and as we done. So you're going to take your cap size, I have 75 horsepower, add 208, 3 phase force, three, uh, T frame, at 1200 RPM, go to EWI, electrical line industrial, page 194, bottom, you guys have to go to the bottom of the table, and when you go there, um, to the bottom of the table, you're going to get yourself a cap size of, uh, a cap size of 25. 25 K bar. That's the cap size. Now, Adam, if the system was 480, you're done. If the system was 480, you're done. Except the system is 28. Because of a 28 system, guys, take the voltage is different. You have to up up it a little bit, right? Increase 33 percent. So you take the 25 K bar that you you have done, and you multiply it by 1.33. And that will get you at 3, 3 K bar, okay? You can see why that multiplied by 1.33 because of modification. Then, then you're going to take your 33, 3, 3 K bar, K bar. Same thing, electrical and industrial, table 11, uh, 3 to find the standard. And that, by the way, we hit the standard. So this is actually a 33 K bar is a standard. So go find yourself a standard, then you're going to find it is a standard. So we hit the jackpot, basically. So that's a, can you guys see how it moved from 25 all the way to 33? If it was a 480, you stick at the 25, but if it's a 28, you increase it because of the lower voltage to a 33. Make sense? That step, that, that's why I, um, the only reason why I use this example because of that extra step right here. All right, piece of cake. And you guys have a copy of it. Imagine if you don't have a copy of it, you have to write all this stuff. It'll be a little bit fast. All right, so now, now the rest is history, right? Now you find 33. What do you do? We're gonna repeat yourself one more time. We're going to go repeat ourselves, guys. We take the 33 K bar divided by 1.73 times 2 AF. Remember the 2 AF. And when you get yourself a 92 amps, multiply the 92 amps by 1.35, get you 123 amps. Take the 123 amps to table 3 to the 15 B16, 75 degree column. That will get you three conductors number. 1, A, W, and G, and it's a T, H, H, N. Done. You know, uh, no gimmicks, nothing. Piece of cake. Looks like a lot of work, but it's really one calculation. So when you guys doing the test, you do the calculation, and you start sizing. You don't have to do it. So, Karen, when you do the cap feeder, the overcap detection device, just say same as the cap in terms of amps and size it. You, know, you don't have to repeat your calculation. Move on, yes, no, everybody's good? All right, so next, we have cab over competition device. Gentlemen, we just repeated the test uh, for the cab over competition device. Uh, we're gonna take the 92 amps, so multiply it by 123 amps. Take the 123 amps to 240.6, that'll get you go down to 110 amps. Go down to 110 amps. So my fuse is 110. Same thing for the disconnect, guys. 
92 amps get you 123 amps. Take the 123 amps to the well 3-12. That'll get you a 200 amp disconnect, a 200 amp disconnect. So I have 110 amp fuse with a disconnect of 200 to fit right into it. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. Any comments, any questions, gentlemen? Comments, questions about the capacitors? So tomorrow, Karen, you will have one question about, uh, is it one or two? Well, two questions about the capacitors. One will be for switch gear, guys, and one for motors. Did you guys hear me? One for switch gear and one for motors. Not two for motors, only one. The reason why I did two, because it, that one could be 280 or could be 480. Next. The next case is the grounding and bonding. For grounding and bonding, here's what we're going to do, guys, for grounding and bonding. This sheet, you guys have this sheet with you, right? Grab the sheet for grounding and bonding on the test tomorrow, and you're going to be sizing based on the sheet. Did you guys hear me? I'm not going to go over it. I walked you guys through it. You're going to have that sheet open in the front of you, and you're going to do the steps as the sheet goes. Cool? So make sure you have that one here handy. Okay, so now based on this, Based on this, here's what you have. Let me walk you through the system. Now, tomorrow, uh, Karen, you're not going to see a, di a nice diagram like this or a semi-nice diagram like this. I'm not going to give you a diagram. I'm going to give you a description. So if in doubt, ask me, please. So here's what happened. We have a switch gear of 2,500 amp switch gear. Okay? We're bringing conduit. The red, uh, the black is, the red is the box. The black is the conduit it's coming to the switch gear. And then from the switch here, we're, lead, we're feeding a 1600 amp switch board, 1200 amp switch board, and we're, lead, we're feeding a transformer that feeds a, two, a 300 amp cap. Cool? And I'm not going to ask you about all the, I could ask you about all of them, guys. I'm asking you about seven things out of the whole system. Number one, I would like you guys to size the grounding, this one called grounding electroconductor. I want you to size the grounding electroconductor. Number two, um, what is number two? Where do we put number two here? Number grounded electrode conductor. Number two was, oops, I have a number two. Um, oh, yeah, I think I, I followed the, uh, okay. Uh, okay, should be number two here. Okay, thank you. Grounded electrode conductor specification, run for, for water. So I have a grounding electrode conductor. I have a grounding electrode conductor and number two a specification right here. You'll see it. On the test, you guys will see we have only number one. Number three that I'm asking for, guys, is the main bonding jumper right here. You see that? The main bonding jumper. Number four is the supply side bonding jumper. Can you guys see that? Bond the conduit to the ground. Number three, bond the neutral to the ground. Number four, I have an equipment grounding conductor, an equipment grounding conductor that goes to the 16. Number five, I need an equipment grounding conductor um, bonding jumper, load side. And number seven is the system bonding jumper or supply uh, main bonding jumper to the transformer. And number eight is the grounding electrode conductor that coming out of this transformer. I think number two, here's where number two, you guys want to modify this one? Number two, can you guys come here? I think, uh, should have gone there. So I'm going to have a little bar here. This is a grounding bar. And I'm going to take, uh, can you guys do me a favor? Take, modify this one and take it to the ground rod and say ground rod here. And that's number two. Can you do me a favor? Please modify that one. This is a ground bar. This is my ground bar, and this is another wire going to the ground rod. That's where number two is. Okay, one more time. I need number one, grounding electrode conductor. Number two, grounding electrode conductor that going to that to the ground rod. Because the reason why we pick it up, if you guys remember, because you don't have to go higher than number six. And then 
We have main bonding jumper that bond the neutral to the ground. Sub-life side bonding jumper number four bond the conduit to the ground bar. Uh, we have an uh, equipped magnetic conductor that's number five. Um, equipped magnetic conductor. Uh, I'm sorry, number six. Number five is equipment bonding jumper load side. Equipment bonding jumper load side. And the last number seven is system bonding jumper seven. Number eight is grounding electrode conductor for the separated drive system. For the separated drive system. These are our only seven things I'm asking to asking you guys, gentlemen, to size. And I'm missing number six here. We'll do all the same as. Okay. Okay, so we have one, two, three. We got that one. We got four. We got five. Five is the equipment bonding jumper load side. Oh, number six here is number seven. Number eight I'm missing. Okay, we'll do number eight. Oh, I'm not missing it. I have them all. Okay. Any comments, guys? Any questions about that? So grab your your sheet, and uh, what you're gonna see tomorrow, just to make it easier, is something similar. The only thing you're gonna see is description, though. You're gonna I'm gonna be describing it. So please do me a very uh, simple favor. Understand this diagram. The conduit coming to the switch gear, this number four is called the supply side bonding jumper. So understand, because you're going to hear tomorrow, Matt, you're going to ask, I'm going to ask you, well, supply the uh, size, the supply side bonding jumper for a switch gear of 2500 2, amp. That's all. So you're going to understand that this wire, I'm, look, I'm talking about number four. If in doubt, I know grounding and bonding guys is a higher level and it confuses the engineers and designers all the time. If in doubt, ask me, said, well, which one are you this? But you have the sheet in front of you. The sheet that I gave you guys, identify all of them. Okay, so let's go. So, grounding electrode conductor. So let's go to the first thing, grounding electrode conductor. That's the first thing we need to do. For grounding electrode conductor, um, um, Adam, ground electrode conductor for the switch gear. In order to size the ground electrode conductor for a switch gear, guys, you need to size the conductors coming to the switch gear, right? So what you need to do, you're going to take the 2500, 2500 amp, divide them by 8. Why 8? Because Mr. Curly decided to run 8. That will get you 313 amps. Now, if you decided to run 10 tomorrow, would that be wrong? No. You can't parallel this than number 1 out. That's your only description. <laughs> And the rules, guys, is the the minute the smaller the number of parallel runs, the better. And you try to end up with even numbers. So here's kind of rules for paralleling. Try to end up with even numbers, like don't parallel five, typically parallel four, so they can fit in a square kind of, um, you know, two by uh, four. So try to parallel even numbers here, that number. Try to hover over 300, uh, over 400. So when you parallel these, gentlemen, you're going to take a 3, 1, 3 amp, take it to table 3, 10, 15, 15, 16, 75 degree column. That will get you 8 sets. 8 sets of uh, the conductor size is 4 conductors, number 400 kcm. Why 4 conductors, not 3? Because I decided to pull full neutral. I'm not asking you guys to size a neutral here. I did not ask to size a neutral. So I'm asking you, so four conductors, we're pulling full neutral. We decided to pull full neutral. Okay, so that's the conductor to carry the amps for the switch here. Then you take the eight, you multiply it by uh, 400 kcm, and that will get you, gentlemen, uh, 3200 kcm. That's directly from the two, 250 to the 66. And then you take the 3200 KCM, take it to table 250.66, and gentlemen, you will have one conductor, 3 out AWG. No matter, it doesn't matter how big you are, that's the largest that you, uh, the minimum that you are allowed to pull. Can you pull bigger than that? Yes, but that's your minimum. Do you guys see the steps? 
first you size the conductor for the switch gear, then you multiply them by each set by how many runs uh, you have, and then you take it to table 250.66 and you size yourself a conductor. So that would be the grounding electrode conductor. And Karen, this would be the one that's going to the ground bar. Can you see that? That's the one that goes right here to the ground bar. Right here, from here to the ground bar. Now I'm going to go to the one from the ground bar to the ground rod. They should be the same, except there's in the code, there's a requirement that says, hey, don't go higher than number six. So that's why I'm, I'm going there. So, all right, so number, so let's go to any question guys about this? Straightforward. Cool. So number two, I want to remind you guys the same thing, grounding a field conductor, uh, special case, rod or water pipe or plate, the calculation the same as number one. You guys, can you read my handwriting? So grounding electrode conductor, special case, rod or water pipe, uh, same as number one, no need for larger than number six. So 250.66A, if you guys, so your answer would be not one not. It has to be number six, one conductor number six. But how do you do the calculation? You do it exactly how we, we do the same calculation, but you don't have to go higher than number one not, uh, number uh, six. You don't have to do anything here. But I want you to write number six, though, not in one odd. Okay. Main bonding jumper. Uh, main bonding jumper, same as number one. You guys, can you hear that switch gear? Um, if it's more than 1100 kcm, you have to multiply it by 12.5%. So this is where the rule changes. The same calculation, like main bonding jumper is the same as number one, which is a ground electro conductor, except, except this modifier. If you go larger than 900 kcm, you have to stop multiplying by 12.5%. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So if you multiply it, gentlemen, you're going to get yourself a 400 kcm here. 400 kcm, if you do this math. And guess what? Then you take the 400 kcm, take it to chapter 9, table 8, and you see, of course, and that will get you... This is main bonding jumper, one conductor, 400 kcm, copper, bare, insulated, or covered. Doesn't matter. So I... You know, for you guys, when you go, like, you do the calculation as in step number one here, you see, come up with this size here, and then you size the ground electro conductor, the two of them, and the main bonding jumper. Main bonding jumper. So it, just out, it just worked out that's a standard. You go up. Thank you. Very good point. What happens if it's not standard, Chad? So you, you want to go up if it's not standard. You will, yeah. You have to go up. It happened to be, I, we, we just hit the jackpot again. Cool. Any question guys about this? Next. Equipment bundle jumper supply side. For supply side equipment, this is called supply side uh, bonding jumper. Um, uh, so I don't want to call it equipment funding jump because it's confusing. They changed her name. She got married. She changed her name or his name to supply side bonding jumper. So I'm gonna erase this one. So if you guys go to my sheet, you'll know what I'm talking about. Supply side bonding jumper. Now the supply side bonding jumper, Karen, is um, here's the 4,000 amp switch gear. Can you guys see the 4,000 amp switch gear? I have. Uh, eight conduits, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight conduits coming to the bottom of the switch gear. You need to bond the conduits. They call them supply side bonding jumper. Why supply? Because it's at, it, it, in the direction of supplying the switch gear with power. A bonding jumper because bonding a conduit to the ground bar. So there are two ways of doing this, Adam. There are two ways of doing it. Um, there are two ways of doing this. Either either um like same i said same as step number three so if you go to step number three guys here's number three so the conductor that you need is for 400 kcm 
Can you guys see that? Step number three. So you can either do it with one conductor. Can you guys see that one conductor? Um, right in here and one there. So there will be one conductor 400 kcm. Or you can size it based on the conductor inside each one of these conduits. Or you can size it based on the conductor inside each one of these conduits. So let's go to um, uh, equipment bonding chopper supply side. So you're going to have, um, you're going to have, so um, one more time. You can size it. For this one, you have two options. You can either size one. Can you guys get, I, I want to get to, uh, to this. Can you just see right in here? So that will be one conductor, 400 kcm. Everybody can see that? One conductor, 400 kcm. Loop them all together, daisy chain them, madam, from one to two to three, all the way to eight, and to the ground bar. That conductor will be 400 kcm. Now, the second option, so let me say it in here, right? A couple of options here. Option one. That you can do probably make it easier. Option one. Option number one. I'm going to call it CM as uh, three. So, and that would be same as three. That would be one conductor number 400 PCM. Can you guys see it? Right? How we daisy chain it? Dizzy chain them all this, that's option number one. Now option number two, and it's up to you to do. The way you do option number two is you go size them based on the conductor in each conduit. So each conduit was currently 400. So you go 400 kcm, that's the size of the base. Take this one to table 310.15b16, oops, wrong. Um, take this one to table, table 250.66, and if you guys go to, to this, it will give you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight conductors that you need. Each one of them is number one at AWG. Can I get you guys to understand that one? Gentlemen, you have two options now. Either you daisy chain them with a 400 kcm. That's a big conductor to work with. A lot of people wouldn't do that, guys. It's really big conductor, 400 kcm. Option number one, one to the other, to the third, all the way to the ground bar. Option number two, which is the most realistic, as you take one conductor based on these phase. These are the three phase conductors. Based on a 400, uh, 400 uh, kcm for the three phase, 250 to 66, then, then Derek, you have to have eight of them. Eight conductors here, each conductor is going to a conduit. Why eight? So tomorrow, guys, if you don't put eight, then you don't understand the concept. The second concept is a home run. You guys, Derek, does it make sense? Look at this. So we're coming from here, we're tapping it here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and here, all the way to here. That's why eight. Eight conduits, eight um, system bonding jumpers, uh, supply side bonding jumpers, or one supply side bonding jumper, daisy channel. Which one is the best? A lot of people prefer the option number two, guys. Why? It's easier to work with number one versus working with number four out. And you can't, you have, you can't cut it. So you have to basically, here's a conductor. You remove the insulation and you attach it to a ground um, clamp. To the conduit and you continue you can't just cut it so these are the two options that you have for the supply side bonding jump so tomorrow i would like you guys to do the two options option one and option two in the test okay all right so that's my supply side bonding jumper now will equipment bonding jumper load side for the sub panel 1600 m now I'm asking you guys to find me um, um, an equipment bonding jumper, equipment bonding jumper on the load side, on the load side um, for the sub panel. I'm going to take you guys all the way to this, to the diagram here. 
Oops, no, not here, Chad. Too much. Went too far. Here you go. So you can see that 1600 amp. This is what I'm talking about. There's a conduit coming to the switch gear from another panel, and I need to bond the conduit to the ground bar with a wire. And then I need the equipment ground conductor that ground the sub panel, like here. Look at this. This sub panel, I need to bond the conduit coming to it, and I need to have an equipment ground conductor. Okay, so let's go do that. Okay, equipment bonding jumper. This is very easy, guys. Remember, 1600 amp over temperature device. So your over temperature device jumper is 1600 amp. Oops, where am I here? Um, so you take the 1600 amp, take it to 250.12, and that will get you, gentlemen, a four lot. Four lot AWG. Now the question: How many of these four lots do you need? How many of these four lots guys you need? Um, Adam, you have two options in this case. Um, did I get four out? You have two options. Either, can you see that? Either you daisy chain them, everybody can see that, go from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, in this case, depending on how many, how many runs, like if I want to carry this one in four runs, four conduits, so you can, uh, you can divide it, guys, by how many runs you, you have, or you can have one conductor. So I said X here. Can you guys see that X? Because X could be one conductor or multiple conductors. Can you guys see that? So you can have you have to bond it together with one conductor or multiple conductors. So I want to say, can I define the number here, guys? So how am I going to make that one to make sense to you? So I want to make here. I want to say either one, I guess option one, or right underneath the option two, four, four at A W G. Why four? Because I want to go, I want to parallel for this panel uh, to size it four sets. I want to pick four sets. I decided to pick four sets. Okay? Four sets. The same thing right underneath it, guys. Equipment ground conductor atom for the 1600 amp panel. Same thing. You take the 1600 amp, you take it to table 250.22, uh, 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 it will give you exactly the same answer, by the way. So you're going to get, um, uh, where am I here? You're going to get either one conductor, number four. Uh, it's actually the only option you have here. This one is the only option you have, it's four conductors. Four conductors, not A, W, G. If you have four conduits, can you guys see I have four conduits and you have to have four conductors. These are the equipment ground conductor. One conductor in every conduit. One conductor in every conduit. One more time. For the equipment bonding jumper, I have two options, guys. Either go daisy chain them, the conduit, or home run them, home run them, or daisy chain them. So you can have four or one. Now, with the equipment ground conductor, that's this guy inside the conduit, you have to have four. If you have four sets, you have to have four. If you have four sets, you have to have four. Any comments, gentlemen, any questions? Same calculation, though. You have two options here. Option one, option two. Here you have only one option. You have no other option. How are you going to daisy chain inside the conduit? You're going to go from one through the other, the third. These are conduits. You have to pull a wire right through them. So they have to be four wires. Okay. Any question, guys, about five and six? Last one, or last two, is system bonding jumper. Now, I want to remind you guys, we have a transformer right here. We have a transformer, Anna. We need to bond the neutral at the ground. It's called separate drive system. This is seven. And eight is the grounding conductor that coming from the transformer to the ground um, bar. So that's what we're sizing. All right. So for this supply side bonding jumper, guys, it's very simple, very easy. The first thing you need to do, the first step, same calculation as number three, if you remember, except the calculations that we the same method but different uh, outcome. So we have 300 amp. Go size the conductor for the separate system. That will give you four conductors. Number uh, 350. 350 kcm. 
That's these are the conductor that's going to supply the 300 amp panel. Um, then you take the 350, 350 KCM, take it to 250.66 gentlemen, and you're going to end up with one conductor number two AWG. One conductor number two. AWG, one conductor number two AWG. That's your equipment ground conductor, your uh, system bonding job. Why didn't we multiply by 12.5%? Guys, why didn't we multiply by 12.5%? Did we exceed the 1100 KCM? No. If you don't exceed the 1100 KCM, you don't have to multiply by 12.5%. By okay, grounding electrode conductor, that's the that for a separately separately derived system same as number seven so you're going to take the um yeah, same as number seven so your answer my friend will be one conductor here same calculation number two e w g same calculation any comments any questions same calculation now I want to remind you, Derek, that seven and eight are identical up to up to service conductor of eleven hundred kcm. After eleven hundred kcm copper, then they start being slightly different. By you start multiplying the system binding jumper by four and a half percent. Any comments? Any questions, gentlemen? Comments? Questions? If you know what you're doing, there's really not a whole lot of calculation involved. But you have the sheet in the front of you, have a, a chit chat. So, so that's all I have. Can um, let's take uh, uh, five minutes, guys, or seven minutes, and then I'll do the theory, and then we'll let you work on the project. Thank you.